Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In the last class, we had talked about uh, how the plug nozzle uh, would have a better performance, off design performance. Let us look at it in this graph. If we have uh, P C by P on the x axis and uh, C F on the y axis, this is a log scale, so if you have a nozzle designed for some high altitude condition somewhere here, a conventional nozzle or a conical nozzle will go like this. Whereas a plug nozzle will have a superior performance throughout. This is So, the conical nozzle has a much inferior altitude at conditions other than the design conditions, its performance is not as good as a plug nozzle or an aerospike nozzle. Okay. So, next we move on to the other topic that is thrust vectoring, right. Thrust vectoring is something that is used by all missiles as well as uh, uh, launch vehicles. Uh, if you look at uh, the tactical missiles that is these are small rockets and uh, if you look at uh, what is the level of thrust uh, that they produce, uh, the accelerations that they have initially is of the order of 10 g. So, they very quickly go to a very high velocity, okay. so which is why you do not need uh, any control in the boost phase, they usually have something known as a boost phase wherein uh, the thrust is uh, very, very large and uh, it goes to very high accelerations due to gravity. The acceleration achieved are very high and after which they will have a sustained phase which will essentially keep it at that particular Mach number. Okay. So, for such uh, uh, rockets or tactical missiles uh, aerodynamics is a very good uh, aerodynamics offers very good way to control the uh, motion of this as in if you want it to wear around to a target and other things you can have fins and you can make it. Uh, make it go towards the target very easily. But if you look at launch vehicles and uh, strategic missiles that is long range missiles, uh, when they take off their accelerations are very, very small uh, typically of the order of 1.6 g to 2 g, right. they are not very large. So, as they are going up, they are going up very slowly and crosswinds can take them in a direction that is not intended if you have strong cross winds. Uh, launch vehicle uh, you can put off the launch by a few hours, you can say till the weather uh, 
gets into some kind of uh, reasonable conditions, you are not going to launch it and you will wait for that time to launch it. But missiles you cannot afford to do that because you need to be ready every time. Uh, even in launch vehicles, you would still want some kind of control in this period of launch wherein the velocities are very small. Up to it, the time that it reaches a Mach number of around 0 0.5, aerodynamic control will not be very, very effective, right. So it is unlike aircrafts where unlike aircrafts will have a very large surface area, right. Uh, the wing span is very large. So, it can uh, produce substantial lift, here you do not want it to have so much drag associated with any control surface, you want it to be minimal, so you will have very small fence. So, a, for under these conditions you would need something known as thrust spectrum, that is can you change the direction of the thrust itself, so as to take the vehicle in the direction that you want it to go in. In addition if you have uh, uh, looked at uh, launch vehicles, let us say PSLV or something like that, you will find that it has a main core and on the side it has a small strap ons, right. PSLV has uh, six strap on motors now the nozzle of all these uh, boosters are in such a way that they are canted away that is the thrust that it produces is at some angle to the uh, vertical axis right so if this is the axis then the thrust produced is not uh, parallel to it, but at some angle, right. So, if all of the thrust vectors meet at some common point on the axis, then it is perfectly balanced, otherwise there is some imbalance and you need to have a counter force to overcome this, right. You need to have a control force capable of overcoming this, otherwise the vehicle could veer in a direction that is not intended. So, for all these things you need uh, this thrust vectoring, okay. Now uh, thrust vectoring can uh, do all this that is it can uh, allow the vehicle to roll yaw and pitch. In this class uh, we will concentrate on what are the ways in which we can vector this thrust, what are the means that are available and what is it that is practiced and what can also be done, okay. Now uh, typically thrust vectoring there are three modes that are usually followed, one is Jimballing of thrust chamber, or nozzle, or introducing. mechanical control surfaces
for secondary fluid injection in the exit cone. We will look at each of them uh, in a little more detail in this class. Now firstly, uh, gimballing the thrust chamber or the nozzle. If you uh, look at a liquid engine, liquid engines typically uh, the propellants are not stored in the engine or in the uh, chamber where uh, it produces thrust that is the fuel and oxidizer makes and burn. So it is stored in a separate chamber, so the engine it is as itself will be very small. So you can look at moving the engine in uh, two different uh, planes to get the control force that you require, okay. That is possible in a uh, liquid engine. That is if the engine were hinged on this, you could move it around uh, by an angle alpha in either direction and if you have something known as uh, a universal joint, universal joint is uh, nothing but if you have two hinges, right. If you have two hinges like this, using one of them you can move it in one plane, using the other one you can move it in the other plane, right. So using both of them you can move it in two different planes, that is what is a universal joint. If you have the entire engine mounted on a universal joint, then you can move it in this plane by alpha and also in the plane perpendicular to the board uh, by an angle alpha, okay. So that is what a gimbal or a hinge will do. Um, as you can see, if the engine is moved, overall engine is itself moved uh, by an angle, then the thrust produced will be the cos of this angle, right. So it will be lesser than the actual thrust. So you are going to lose some amount of thrust by vectoring the thrust itself. So you can using this move the entire vector the thrust by plus minus 12 degrees and there will be a small thrust loss. And this is typically used in only liquid engines. That is because as I said earlier, uh, if you look at solid engines, the entire propellant is also inside the motor. So it would be very difficult to move the uh, entire motor because the weight of the propellant is also there. Whereas in a liquid engine, the propellant is stored elsewhere and only thing is you need to have flexible hosing, otherwise it will not allow this kind of movement, okay. So you need and you need also large actuators to 
to move this okay. And the critical thing is if you look at this the entire thrust of the engine is transferred through this hinge or the gimbal. So, this needs to be very carefully designed because this is a very critical parameter I mean very critical element because the entire thrust is transferred through this element to the rest of the vehicle okay. So, this needs to be carefully designed instead of uh, gimballing the entire engine the other option is can we just move the nozzle itself and that is called as a flexible nozzle. So, if you have an actuator and move this nozzle alone right then you can get the same uh, desired effect of vectoring the thrust only thing is this joint needs to be flexible here and allow for movement okay. This can also give plus minus 12 degrees and uh, again uh, there will be a small thrust loss because you are anyway vectoring the thrust. So, the cos of the thrust is the only one that is available uh, in the axis along the axis. This has also been uh, used in both solids and liquid rockets. Here uh, you can use it in solid rockets primarily because you do not have to move the entire motor you are only moving the nozzle, but still the actuation force required here is also quite significant you need uh, The last of this variety is again if you have something like a ball and a socket joint instead of this one you can uh, move the nozzle.
okay. if you have it mounted on a bearing then you can move it and therefore get the uh, required thrust vectoring. Now in both these methods the nozzle in some sense is submerged inside the motor and this leads to something known as submergence loss. Primarily if you look at uh, the gases coming out uh, they need to you would also have propellant uh, stored in this direction if it is coming in this direction it is a lot easier otherwise the, uh, the gases coming from burning of the propellant in this uh, region will have to turn through a large angle and that will lead to uh, some losses because the flow will now have to turn through a large angle to uh, get to the nozzle and that is uh, given by something like it varies between 0 0.4 to 1.2 percent loss in ISP and uh, if you remember the discussions that we had in the morning uh, that is uh, if this propellant were aluminized propellant right uh, then uh, uh, we discussed that the particles do not or uh, condensed particles do not expand and they cause loss right. Uh, this gets coupled with that and uh, depending on the percentage of uh, aluminum present in the propellant and the amount that the nozzle is submerged the loss could be higher. I mean this it is within this range it could be higher if it is more submerged lesser if it is less submerged okay. The next uh, set of control that we can get is from uh, mechanical control surfaces. Here if you are using mechanical control surfaces what you will have is something jetting into the exit flow and therefore uh, you are going to obstruct the flow and uh, cause the required thrust vector. Okay. Jettivators are something like this if you have a rocket motor like this at its uh, normal position it is something like this and if you want to have a side force you could change its position to something like this. So this does not protrude into the flow in its normal position but when you change its position uh, on one side you get over expansion and on the other side you get a little bit of under expansion this causes a side force okay. So you are going to get a small amount of thrust vectoring if you are using this 
uh, you will get something like plus minus 7 degrees of thrust vectoring and uh, compared to the previous ones this is a lot better in that sense that uh, firstly it does not require a very large actuation, actuation, actuation power right because you are only looking to actuate a small surface and therefore the power required is smaller here. Uh, these are used in solid rockets this small portion this dotted line it is it is in line with the nozzle when it is uh, not doing anything right you can then rotate it and on one side it will it will be flush with the nozzle so it will act as uh, on one side it will over expand and on the other side it will under expand and therefore uh, give you the required side force Then there are some things known as jet tabs. Now, if we were looking at it from the bottom, it would look like this. Now, you could move this into the flow as per requirement okay? and depending on the amount this obstructs the flow, you will get the uh, thrust force proportional to that. Okay? So, as such this does both these 
uh, do not obstruct the flow in their normal position. So, they do not add to any loss uh, in their normal operation, but when they are used they will uh, lead to a small loss. With this you can get plus minus 14 degrees of uh, change in the thrust uh, and whenever this is in use it leads to something like 1 percent loss and thrust per degree of deflection okay. and the actuation power here is also very small because you are only uh, trying to actuate a small tab. So, the actuation power required is smaller here. The last uh, in the mechanical control surfaces is something known as a jet vane. These jet vanes are in the exhaust gas flow, okay. so uh, because they are present in the exhaust gas flow itself even without actuation they are going to lead to some kind of thrust loss. Okay. So, they are going to have you are going to have some thrust loss you can get uh, thrust vectoring of the order of plus minus 9 degrees and uh, the thrust loss will be more when it is actuated okay it will it is there even without actuation in this case and it will be more when it is actuated so this needs uh, pretty good heat resistant material because it is always in the exhaust flow right. Uh, what is uh, usually done in, in the case of jet vanes is you might need uh, this for a small period of time during takeoff or during some critical operation after which you can throw them away. So, these are used uh, in some examples wherein you are launching something from a uh, ship or launching a missile from a ship or something like that then it has to turn uh, by a large angle. So, you can use this and then throw this away and uh, for the rest of the flight this is not useful. Okay. 
So, it is used for a very small period of time. Okay. Now, the last uh, thing that is used actually in uh, rockets is the liquid injection. Remember in our earlier class we said uh, uh, if you have an oblique shock the flow separates and uh, it will introduce a side force right. Uh, in this method of controlling or thrust vectoring we actually make use of that and we inject a liquid at some known point in the divergent portion. That is, let us say if we inject the liquid at this portion because of the liquid coming out here, the an oblique shock develops up, upstream of this liquid injection point, and because of this, uh, you will get a side force, right? Because in this portion, it actually acts as a nozzle being cut off and up after some length, and therefore get gets you the required side force okay. SITVC is used in uh, PSLV's uh, stage 1 uh, motor for thrust vector control. In this case because of the liquid injection there is a small amount of thrust augmentation that is uh, happening. The liquid that is used is strontium perchlorate. Now, the reason for using such a liquid is uh, if you look at uh, the momentum of the jet that is coming through, if you are uh, injecting this jet, this jet needs to have a higher momentum than the jet. Okay, so rho j v j square must be comparable to rho g v g square. Now, if you notice here the density of the gas is very small and but the velocities are very large and that is squared right. Whereas, here uh, the liquid velocities are not going to be so large. So, you need to make it up with a higher density liquid which is why uh, this strontium perchlorate is used. People have also uh, thought about using a fraction of the exhaust gases themselves, taking a certain bleed from the uh, combustion chamber and using it. But the trouble with that is you have to have uh, uh, leak proof uh, valves that operate not only at high temperature, but also at high pressure, which is not very easy. Okay. Otherwise, if there is a leak, there will be always a side force. So, you do not want that and therefore, uh, this kind of uh, taking a certain bleed from the combustion chamber uh, has not been pursued. So, therefore, you have to have a large tank containing this uh, strontium perchlorate primarily because 
if it needs to be injected at some velocity, the pressure here of the jet must be greater than the pressure here. So, this uh, tank needs to be pressurized okay, and then the liquid has to be expelled under pressure. So, that uh, makes it a little more bulkier. But as I said, if you want to use gas injection, then hot gas handling is not very easy. Uh, in uh, liquid engines, in some of the liquid engines, uh, you usually have something known as uh, a gas generator, which is used to run the turbine, uh, which in turn runs the pumps. Okay. Uh, this gas generator also uh, has an exhaust, which can be used in auxiliary uh, nozzles to provide the kind of thrust vectoring that we want. So, you will have uh, small motors for that. If this is the main engine, you could have small engines that can be moved You could have these small uh, thrust chambers, which uh, you can control and move it, move the entire thrust chamber. That will give you the required side force that is required. Okay, but in this case, uh, the thrust vectoring that is possible is very small, not very large. Okay, so the only other thing that people have uh, kind of thought of using, but not yet uh, looked at is uh, in this case, instead of using a liquid, let us say one has a liquid rocket motor, a small liquid rocket motor and inject the exhaust gases here. That could also give you the required side force, primarily because you will have a very high uh, jet velocity. Okay. And, uh, uh, if you want to switch off and switch on this, it is not very difficult because you are only going to operate the liquids, right? Switching on and switching off a liquid rocket motor is not a problem. But uh, this is something that has not been uh, pursued and probably could be pursued uh, sometime later. There is also uh, another method wherein if you have uh, four rocket motors. Okay, and the exhaust coming out through uh, uh, canted nozzles, right? Something like this. Let us say you had uh, four uh, rocket motors, liquid rocket motors that are providing you the thrust, then you could have a situation wherein if you look at it from the bottom, let us say these are the exhaust ports of these four motors, 
you could increase the thrust and decrease the thrust in two of them to get your required control force. That is, let us say if you want to pitch up and pitch down, right. So, you could actually increase the thrust of this to pitch up and reduce the thrust in this, so that uh, it will this will cause a uh, this will make the pitch switch if you are looking into the board uh, this will cause a pitch up pitch down okay if you are looking into the board this will cause the vehicle to pitch down okay and uh, similarly you can have this is for pitch uh, for yaw increase the thrust in these two or the other two to get the required yaw motion and you could also have rule using two of them in this fashion okay. If you increase the thrust in these two then you can have this is only possible if you have a liquid rocket motor and if you have four of them okay. If you have uh, this is uh, canted nozzle, so uh, the thrust vectors will not be parallel, uh, I mean perpendicular to the board, it is at an angle. So, you will have that uh, role. Uh, till now, uh, we have looked at uh, this rocket propulsion course in this fashion, that is, we have not looked at what is the thing that is there in the thrust chamber. We have looked at nozzle, we have tried to derive equations to get the specific impulse of the nozzle. We have not bothered ourselves about what is the kind of uh, engine that is there liquid, solid or hybrid. Now, let us look at uh, in the next class, we will start looking at uh, the different kinds of engines that is solid, liquid and hybrid motors. Okay. Thank you.